every spring we have some college students who actually pay Habitat and for their spring break come and stay and work for Habitat the whole week. This year we're not just hosting Boston College, we're also hosting UVA. So anyone would like to help feed them supper, we try to give them a good meal every night. Um, we've had the groups, the deacons have helped, building and grounds have helped, commission hearts have helped. Just let me know so we can get that scheduled. We'll have about 30 kids here this year versus our normal 18. So I could use all the help with that, and that's March 3rd through 8th. And that is all I have. No, it's not. Sorry, Pastor Tim. Um, just want to let everyone know that Mr. Ed Seaman passed yesterday, so please keep the Seaman family in your prayers. And as soon as we have those arrangements available, we will make sure we let the church know. Uh, good morning. I'd like to uh, lead us in our morning prayer this morning. Um, we need to remember the family of Ed Seidman, who passed away yesterday. Um, Ms. Hazel Rowe, who will be having a surgery this upcoming week. Um, so let us uh, look at our prayer list and uh, remember these people in prayer. And I'm sure there's people on your hearts and minds today that you would also like to remember. So let us... Um, bow together in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day to come together to worship you, to give our praise to you. We thank you for your Holy Spirit and your presence in our lives. We thank you, Lord, that you guide us and direct us. Give us strength and wisdom as we go about our days. Lord, we pray for those who have special needs so healing, those that have upcoming surgery, those that have procedures this week and tests that they're, they might be anxious about. We pray, Lord, that they would uh, look to you for peace, and we pray for those uh, lost loved ones, and we ask that you might comfort them and give them peace. Lord, we pray for their needs to be met by others that care about them and, and by the church family. Lord, we pray for this service today that you might speak through our songs and our words, that you might touch the hearts and lives of others. Lord, we uh, think about the role that women have had in, in our Bible history that uh, that you have used women in such a strong way. We pray that you would use these women of this church and continue to bless us through their ministry. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. share some of our Commission Hearts projects um, over the last year. Um, Commission Hearts actually meets on the third Thursday of each month at 6.30. Um, all ladies are welcome. Our next meeting will be March 21st at 6.30. So we want to kind of show you some of the things we've done over the last year. So if we could get the slides going. This is our um, soup and chili cook-off that we had last Sunday. These are our winners. For those of you that missed it, you missed a treat. Uh, Andy Britt was third place with her sausage and tortellini soup. Um, I had to scrape the bottom of the um, pot to get a taste. It was really good. <laughs> uh, second place, David Braswell with his chili. And first place was Cheryl Holland with her vegetable beef soup. And honestly, I tried that too, and it was delicious. I think we all need to have that on a cold winter day. Um, next, we have our January project. We did uh, a collection of items for the Wayne Pregnancy Center. So you can see we have a small group, 
but we do mighty things. So, um, the next few slides are on our Pioneer Luncheon. Uh, this is an annual uh, meeting that they have of the retired Southern Bell Telephone Company employees. Um, they, they really enjoy having a good home cooked meal and fellowship and not having to worry about cooking and cleaning up. So we use that as one of our biggest fundraisers every year. Uh, next, um, our snacks. Our snack bags this year we put together for the um, Meals on Wheels recipients in the Rosewood area. Um, on the, the week of Thanksgiving, there's a couple of days there that the recipients don't get meals. So we figured we could try to fill in the gap there a little bit for them. Um, next, our uh, next few slides are on our commission parts. Um, shoebox packing party. We actually sponsored that this year. We were able to um, participate with the whole church. We packed 103 shoe boxes that were packed and shipped. And these, if you're not familiar with that project, they're shipped out through um, Samaritan's Purse and they go out to children all over the world um, that may never have received a Christmas present. And more importantly, they get to learn about Jesus and that he loves them. Um, our next Slide. Oh, well, I don't have a slide on this one. Um, we donated gift cards for our client, the clients at the Fordham House. Um, it's an emergency shelter here in Goldsboro, and they were really appreciative. Um, that way they could buy some personal items for their self. Um, in August, we participated in the National WMU Christmas in August um, program. We donated Walmart gift cards to uh, Creators Fellowship, which is in Porcupine, South Dakota. <laughs> um, the only way we found out about that is through WMU. Um, but it actually provides meals for the dialysis patients that they have there in that community. Um, we also donated money towards the Rosewood <coughs> Teachers Gifts in August. July, we collected um, newspapers for the animal shelter, and as you see in the slide, we provided lunch um, for the Kitty Askins patients, family, and staff. That was on a Saturday, and they were very appreciative of that, too. Our June project was a summer uh, pioneer luncheon for the Southern Bell retirees again, but we didn't, um, didn't have a, a slide on that one. Um, we've decided that once a year is about all we can do. So we're going to just stick to the December uh, Pioneer Luncheons from now on. Um, this slide that you see here is in cooperation with the Noose Baptist Association project to provide personal care items for migrant workers in the Kinston area. Uh, we provided these razors and shave cream and things for them uh, to use in their um, goodie bags. Uh, we also donated money for the Rosewood Teachers Appreciation Project, and we provided detergent, paper towels, and gas cards for a Rosewood student's family. Um, we, these were identified as needs by a social worker at the, the school, and they were related to an illness in a family, so we tried to step up and, and fill in there, too. We also, May was a busy month. We donated um, magazines and books to Willow Creek Nursing and Rehab Center. In April, we put together some jelly bean um, inspirational bags, and these were donated to our Wednesday night kids groups, and we hope they enjoyed them. In March, we decorated encouragement cards um, yeah, um, for the... Um, Heart and Soul Ministry. Um, Heart and Soul will be coming up again this March, just so you know, so be prepared. Heart and Soul has a connection here in Rosewood. Um, Joe Woodard actually graduated from Rosewood High School, and he started this project to help um, the homeless in California and Arizona, I believe it is. Um, but we actually coordinated the donations and we decorated the cards for that and also in March we helped with the movie night that we had over in Braswell Hall. 
In February, we have the soup and uh, chili cook-off again. And our next slide shows our Valentine cards. I'm really proud of these. There, there you go. <laughs> um, we donated these to the Helping Hands Assisted Living. And, you know, a lot of the ladies say, well, I'm not crafty. But you can see we made some really pretty Valentine cards. <laughs> Um, our last slide is the blessing box, and you might have seen it on your way out if you go out the side entrance here. This is for people in the community that may need something. We provide um, food and toiletries and paper products. Um, this is an ongoing product or a project, and any donations that you would like to go towards this could go directly into the blessing box. If you come by and see it's empty, you could fill it up. Or there's a um, bucket in the Family Life Center at the door there. You could put them there so we can use it to keep this going. Um, as members, we sign up for a week at a time to keep this filled up at least three or four times a week. And um, if you're interested in signing up for a week, please let Betty Jo or myself know. Um, or um, if you wanted to just fill it up um, when you see that it's empty, that would be good. Um, we'd also like to thank everyone who has helped in any way support our project. We could not have done it without you. The support and donations and the extra hands um, from the church, we really appreciate. Uh, please consider joining us for our meetings. It's monthly. Um, and as you can see, we do a lot. We have a lot of fun. And we would like for you to join us being the hands and feet of Jesus in our community and beyond. Now I'm going to turn it over to Jamie, and following the song, we'll be collecting the tithes and offerings. Thank you. Turn it over to all of you guys. Y'all can stand up and we can sing Crown Him with Many Crowns.
come down to the kids' corner. voice and 
when he calls, we should hear his calling and obey his call. We may not hear him call our name out loud like Samuel did, but we can hear his voice in our hearts. And sometimes, just like the headphones, we have to blog out all the busyness of our lives so we can hear his voice. And how can we hear his voice as kids? We can come to church and be good listeners when Pastor Ken and Miss Stacy and all of our teachers teach us. We can pray and we can read the Bible because the Bible is God's word. And if we do all those things, we can block out the world, we can be quiet, and we can hear God speak in our hearts. So let's say a prayer today that this week we can be more like Samuel, we can obey God's call, and we can become very quiet so we can hear his voice. Will you bow with me? Dear God, please help us to be more like Samuel. Help us to listen when you call our name. Help us to obey and follow your calling. Help us to respond like Samuel. Help us to always say when you call, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. All right, kids, you can go to children's church. Do they have children's church? Thank you. 
Stitchers, and we have several in it. Shelda, Miss Carolyn, Libby, myself, and we have a best time. We do. Uh, we meet every Tuesday from. We usually nine thirty, maybe to two or two thirty, sometimes three. Um, we do a lot of learning, quilting, laughing, and lots of fellowship. Um, we're just a small family within a church family. Um, many of the um, the money that we raise from the quilts that we make or quilt is given to the church, and we have raised quite uh, quite a bit of money to give it to the church for different functions. Some of it was used for the youth, some of it was used for um, the debt on the Family Life Center, um, the women's Bible study, and the, as of recent, we gave some for the camera security system. So we um, enjoy what we do. This past year, we wrapped, we wrapped off several quilts in the period of time that we've been doing it. And this past year, the ones we wrapped off um, were top bidders was um, Thetan, Mary Lou Carlotti, and Libby Rask. In 2023, we gave out nine prayer quilts so if you know any members of our church that are in need of a prayer quilt, please let one of us know so that we can provide it for them. Um, and if anyone's interested in coming joining us um, on our quilting day on Tuesdays, we would love to have you. You don't have to have any skills, because I knew nothing when I came. But I've learned a lot. So we would love to have you. Um, if you come and stay all day, that would be great. If you can come stay an hour, that's great too. Just whatever fits your schedule. And we thank you. Please stand and join us as we sing in the garden. Give the Lord our holy and praise.
morning. Um, thank you so much for this opportunity to come and speak to you today. This is a real privilege for me. Did you know that God can put a calling on your life? He can. It's not just the big things in life that He calls you to do either. It's the things that are small that matter sometimes even more. We know that pastors have a calling on their life, and we know that mission to go to the mission field, people have callings on their life too. We're called to do many things for Christ, and today I'd like to talk a little bit about what it is to have a calling on your life and what you do about it. How do you, what kind of strategy do you use to find out exactly what it is? Is it God calling me to do a thing? Here's an example that I'd like to give you of God making a call on your life. There was a farmer that was out in the field, in his cornfield, and he was checking over his crops. And they were looking pretty good. And he looked up in the sky and he saw three different formations of clouds. There was one cloud here, one in the middle, and one over here. And the cloud formed and he said, I wonder what that is. And he looked and there was a G in the first cloud, there was a P in the middle cloud, and there was a C in the third cloud. And he stood there and he hung his head and he said, Lord, what are you trying to say to me? And he said, oh, I know. Go. He said to me to go and to preach. He is saying for me to go and to plant. Uh, I'm sorry, that's the wrong thing. He <laughs> said for me to go and to preach Christ, to preach Christ to all the world. So he gets so excited. And he runs out of the cornfield and he goes and calls the board of deacons. And he said, listen, I've been called to preach. He said, I know it. I just know it. There were these three clouds. And he told the story. And then all of a sudden, um, he says, what do I do about it? I don't know what to do. What do I do about it? And they said, what we usually do is to have you come and fill the pulpit one Sunday and find out if this is what you what you're called to do, if you feel comfortable with this, or is this really your calling? So the man said, okay, fine. So they set up a day, and he, he came to the pulpit, and he preached a sermon. And he preached, and he preached. And it was rather long. Nobody quite understood what he was trying to say. And then afterwards, the deacons kind of looked at and the, the man was finished. And he said, that concludes the service for today. And the deacons were on the front row, and they said, what are we going to tell this man? And so they looked at each other, and the wise man of the group, the older one, said, I think I know what to do. And he said, well, sir, he said, we do appreciate so much you coming and preaching to us today, and we thank you so much for that. But maybe, maybe the Lord wasn't saying go preach Christ. Maybe he was saying, go plant corn. <laughs> so, now that I have your attention, <laughs> I'd like for us to begin this morning in talking about God can put a calling on your life by thinking when God does put a calling on your life, what do you do? How do you know if it's God calling you? You can ignore that call, or you can face it and know that Christ is putting a crisis of belief on your life. Now, what I mean by a crisis of belief is that God is expecting you to do one of two things. He's expecting you to accept or to reject. That crisis of belief is asking you to show your faith in Christ, that you know who he is, that you believe that he is who he says he is and that he will do what he says he's going to do. And then he's asking you to have an action. And that action should be that you accept the call. Not everyone accepts the call. The, 
the first action is an action of faith. I mean, the first thing is the of showing your faith, and the second one is the action that you will take. Let us go. Uh, let us um, go to the scripture now. Ephesians one, Ephesians four, one through seven. Thank you. Therefore, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and one Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. I want us to talk about seven things. That seven realities of experiencing what God is doing in your life. And this is truly an experience when God calls you. Now, we all can be called to do new things, as I said before, as I said before. But what we need to do is to make sure our calling is coming from Christ. You can be called to do many things by many people. But you need to know that it is the Spirit of God that's calling you. First thing is, um, what you need to do, is to always watch God <coughs> and what He's doing all around you. Because God is working all around you every day. You need to see what He's doing and where you fit in to what's <coughs> happening. Number two, God pursues a love relationship with you that is real and personal has nothing to do with someone else's relationship with Christ. It has to do with yours. We all have different ways of knowing what Christ wants us to do. Um, we have so many ways of God speaking to our heart. When The third thing is that God invites you to become involved in Him, in His work. Now we're looking toward the action part. If you believe who He is, and you know that Christ is in your heart, and you want to live for Him, and you want to be a servant of Him, then you know what the next step is, and that's to take action. And I am dry, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. So God invites you to come to a place of work. So in that, we need to understand a few things. And that is that God is going to call you. Yes, this is the call from God. And he wants you to do, whether it's being in a mission action group and doing a mission action for Christ, or whether it's teaching the Sunday school class, whatever it is, whether it's being the librarian or singing in the choir. Did, did you hear me? I said singing in the choir. <laughs> We are looking for choir members, and I believe, I believe our director can show you that she has the capacity to take whatever you have and make it a glory to God. She does with us all the time. God speaks through the Holy Spirit. Now, we know that God can put a calling on your life, and if he does, he is going to speak to you in certain ways. One could be the Holy Spirit. One could be through your Bible study. One could be through prayer and circumstances that are going on in your church that reveal himself to you. His purpose and his ways. One way that God can reveal himself to you is something that I like to think of that he does for me. And that is he nudges me. Anybody understand what I mean when I say God nudges you? He doesn't full on say, Brenda, it's time for you to do this and so on. He kind of gives me, gives the Holy Spirit. I know when the Holy Spirit is with me, and I know that God is saying, you need to be a part of this. So that, I feel, is my nudge. And when I feel that, I hope and pray 
that I always will answer God in a positive manner. God's invitation to work with him can bring about a crisis of belief. Now, a crisis of belief requires two things, faith and action. Do you have faith in Jesus Christ? You said you did when you accepted him as your Savior. Have you kind of sit back and not done things that you know that the Lord wanted you to be a part of? He is asking you to be faithful to him, to be a servant of him. You, and number six is, I must make some major changes in your life. If you've kind of backslidden or you've not done the things that Christ has asked you to do, chances are you need to make some changes in your life. It happens to all of us. Sometimes we need to just come to the altar and let the Lord have his way with our heart and lead us to understand and know that he is real. He is who he says he is and he'll do what he said he would do. He will provide you. God never calls anybody to do something without providing them what they need to do it and to do it well. And number seven is one of the most important parts. And that is you come to know Christ by experiencing him as you are obedient to him. So when you are asked to do something by the Lord and you know it, and you do not do it, or you try to stay away from that so that he doesn't speak to you, you are giving him excuses. That's all it is. To stand. That's something that I always talk about a lot in my daily devotion, is that what it means to stand for Christ. This is what he's asking you to do. To use all those things and to stand. Stand therefore having your loins girt about you with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with preparation of the gospel of peace. There was, um, many years ago, Priscilla Shaw wrote a, a piece that was called, Who's Your Daddy? I have read that so many times and it just means so much to me. I, I could not go without sharing that with you today. So bear with me as, as I share this with you. When you feel like you can't go on, or you cannot handle the task at hand, you stop and ask yourself, who do you belong to? Who do you really belong to? He is the first, the last, the beginning and the end. He's the keeper of creation and the creation of all things. He is the architect of the universe and the manager of all the time. He always was, always will be, unmoved, unchanged, undefeated, and never undone. He was bruised but brought healing, and he was pierced but eased pain. He was persecuted but brought freedom. He was dead but brings life. He is risen to bring power, and he was raised to bring peace. The world could not understand him. Armies can't defeat him. Leaders could not ignore him. The new age can't replace him. And Oprah Winfrey cannot explain him away. <laughs> you remind yourself that he is light and he is love and he is longevity and he is the Lord. He is goodness and he is kindness and he is faithful. He is God. He is holy. He is righteous and pure and he is eternal. He, he is his ways are right. His will is unchanging. And his mind is on you and me. He is the Savior of all. Our guide and our comforter and our Lord. And he is our joy and our overcomer. I serve him because his bond is love. And his yoke is easy. And his burden is light. And his goal for you and I is abundant life. We follow him because he is the wisdom of the wise, the power of all power, the ancient of days, and the ruler of all rulers. 
the leader of all leaders. His goal is a relationship with you and me. And he will never leave you, never forsake you, never overlook you, and never cancel an appointment with you in his appointment book. Because he's coming back for us. When you fall, he will lift you up. When you fail, he will forgive you. When you are weak, he is strong. And when you are lost, he is your way. When you are afraid, he is your courage. When you are hurt, he will heal you. When you are broken, he will mend you. When you are blind, he will lead you. When you face trials, he will be with you. And when you are hungry, he will feed you from his word. When you face persecution, he will shield you. And when you face problems, he will comfort you. And when you face loss, he will provide for you. And when we face death, he will carry us all the way home to be with him in heaven. That's the best part. He is everything for everyone, everywhere, every time, and in every way. He is your God. And that, my brothers and sisters, is who you are. And that's who you belong to. Let's read Philippians 4 through, uh, chapter 4, 6 through 9, and then 11 through 13. careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be, be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep you, you keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, and whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. And the God of peace shall be with you. And then Philippians 4, 11 through 13. Not that I speak in respect of one, for I have learned, in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I think that that last scripture, the 11th and 12th verse, has a great deal of meaning personally to me because it has been such a help in my life when I've read it through difficult times. There is a prayer um, that I, that, I mean, prayer is something that I want us to think about right now. There was a woman that went to lunch with a friend, and the friend seemed to be concerned about many things. She seemed to be low at that point, and she said, I don't understand it. He said, she said, what, why are you always praying? What is it that you gain from prayer? What do you get from it? And the friend looked down and she said, I don't know that I get as much as I lose. She said, let me explain by telling you all the things that I have lost. And I think that you will understand then. I've lost my pride. I've lost my arrogance. I've lost my greed and my bad urges. 
I've lost my anger, praise God. I have lost lust. I have lost the pleasure of lying. I've lost the taste of sin. I lost impatience, despair, discouragement, and defeat. See, sometimes we lose things that stand between us and what we need from our Lord and Savior. If there are things in our lives that don't belong there, it can keep Christ at bay. So what we need to do is to realize when those things become a problem and get rid of them. Prayer is education because it strengthens us. It heals because we lose what we no longer need. Prayer is that direct channel to Christ. I would like to say just a few words about how I came to be up here today. Betty Jo, the director of the um, Commission Hearts, was at the reception we had for Judy Lewis. And um, she and I were talking just a wee bit. And she said, I'm working on the Women's Day, and I don't have a speaker yet. She said, I need a speaker. And all of a sudden, I opened my mouth, and I said, oh, I'll be glad to do it for you. And then I kind of looked around, and, and you remember that? I kind of looked around, and I wanted to say, but I knew it was bearing on my faith, you know, that I couldn't say that, so I didn't. But I wanted to say, who said that? And then I know who said that. The Holy Spirit said that. Because the Lord has spoken to me many times, and I have been able to speak at other places, and truly, it is a wonderful blessing. Um, so the opportunity to speak to you today is something that I will never forget. I just pray that you have learned something from what I have said that will give you benefit in your spiritual life. And I would like to ask Pastor Tim if he will come forward now and close our service today with an altar call. And I just ask you if you have anything you need to talk to the Lord about, to please come forward. Thank you, Brenda, and thank you to all of our ladies for sharing with us in worship today. Um, I think you probably know, but these ladies know firsthand now, it's a lot harder uh, to be up here than it is to sit out there. Um, and so thank you for uh, them being willing to, to serve in that way and to listen and answer the call of the Holy Spirit upon their life. And you can see God is working and moving in our church and is working and moving for our ladies. So I highly encourage you, as they've already done this morning, uh, for you to get involved in the ministries we have here at the church. And I know they would love to share with you more if you have any questions about any of them. When they meet, how to get involved, what sorts of things go on, uh, we, we'd love to, to help you with that. Um, there, there has been a, a call to go out about calling. What is God calling you to this morning? And uh, God speaks in, in so many ways. We've heard uh, the account from Samuel, that auditory call. Uh, sometimes that happens and sometimes it doesn't. And other ways that God calls you. But how's God calling you today? Uh, what is God calling you to do today? And what action? I like that. It's an action word. What is God calling you to do and to act upon today? Um, that, that is uh, the, the call to us and all of us that are here this morning. Uh, from, from the Lord. So what is what is God putting upon your heart? Maybe it is to accept Him. You've not made that first step. Uh, salvation can be yours. Uh, Jesus came and He lived a blameless life and He went to the cross for us, for our sins. And He defeated death. That's what Easter is all about. He didn't just die. He defeated death. He came back and that He's gone now to be with God. And He will be coming back again. And uh, I pray that you'll make that decision before it is too late before that time comes. So that is a call. It's also a call to be a part, as we've already mentioned, to be a part of things here. Maybe it's to join this church. Uh, maybe you're looking for a church family. I'd love for you to do that. Or maybe it's to just be uh, more involved, to, to dedicate yourself 
uh, to be involved in serving. Uh, and maybe you're visiting and maybe you're coming through and you've got another church family that you're going back to. I encourage you in that way as well. Um, as we stand and sing, I invite you to come forward if you'd like to pray. Or you can do that right where you're at and do business with God as we stand and sing this closing song together. Especially uh, Greg Gurley, he is off, he's listed, uh, but just a quick update on Greg. Uh, he went for a heart catheterization here at Wayne Memorial, ended up at Rex in Raleigh. And he's still at Rex in Raleigh, awaiting uh, uh, some stents to be put in. Um, there's some, some levels that they're waiting on to come down. So if you would lift up Joe and Greg, it's just been a long process. I know when they went in last week, they thought that this would be this kind of an in and out, kind of outpatient thing that's become a week long and plus more um, experience for them. So pray for patience for them. And also Hazel, as mentioned already uh, this morning, Hazel Rowe uh, will be going for surgery. So if you'll lift them, them up, especially in your thoughts and prayers. And a praise. Uh, one of our young men here at this church has completed his Eagle Scout. Um, I've been a part of numerous Eagle Scout ceremonies. There'll be one forthcoming, but I'm speaking of uh, Ben Farford has completed that. So I want to celebrate with his family for that hard work. I know that accomplishment. <laughs> so let's go to the Lord in prayer and give thanks and lift up these ones as we leave. Dear Lord, we come to you. Once again, as a collective body known as Rosewood First Baptist, Lord, thank you for the call that you've placed upon each one of our lives individually and, and collectively. You've called us to serve in this community specifically and to reach out with the good news and the love of Christ. Lord, thank you for these wonderful opportunities uh, that we've had. Lord, for these women that have led us in that direction. And I just pray others that would join and rally around them so even more can be done. 
for the sake of the cause of Christ, for the kingdom of God to grow, uh, that all may know of your love, Lord, not just those that, that have, but those that find themselves uh, in places where they would not like to find themselves homeless and, and without the means that most of us just take for granted. So, Lord, may we give and give out the abundance of love and the abundance of you blessed us with here. And Lord, I thank you for just the faithfulness of those that have gone before us and the faithfulness of those that continue on. Lord, we pray for those that are on our hearts and minds, Lord, that are going through a challenge, going through physical ailments, surgeries, Lord. They're, they're waiting for very literally a, 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 meal, a miracle of healing upon them. So Lord, we just lift up these ones to you, their families, uh, Lord, those who lost loved ones, especially too, Lord, that are grieving and continue to grieve. And, and Lord, just I pray that in those places of hurt, Lord, that healing can begin. Uh, Lord, that you would uh, be with them, that they would realize your spirit is with them, that the body of Christ, the family of God, is here for one another, I pray. Uh, Lord, thank you so much for this lesson, this, this message that we needed today to be reminded of your call. And you continue and still call people to this day. 